Hello everyone, Adam here from Vector3D at TCT Show 2021. And now we're here at E3D and we've got Sanjay to talk to about the new systems from E3D. <laughs> Hello Sanjay, first can you just introduce yourself, tell me what you personally do at E3D and what we're talking about today. Um, I've recently fired myself from um, any form of management, which is wonderful. Um, and wonderful people like Josh and Dave look after um, the functioning of the company. And I try and look after the future product innovation and vision and like what are we trying to do? How are we going to have the greatest impact? Like life goals level kind yeah, of. So focusing now on what we're looking at today, what is this uh, new hype about these E3D products? What are we looking at? Yeah, so this has been a long time coming. Um, Josh, our camera it was like what, 2013? Wow, yes. Yeah, like 20. When we're coming up to 10 years of, v, of V6, right? Yeah. And that's not really fair because V6 has been an evolving target and it looks like the same product, but it's very much not. Um, and the, it, the reliability has improved and performance of it, all of that kind of stuff, but still fundamentally the same system. What we have here is Clean Slate. In summary, the brief to the guys was no tools, no documentation, no experience, 30 seconds. These are Revo nozzles. Revo nozzles are named because A, they're a revolution, uh, but B, because they revolve to change. They're one of E3D's rapid changing uh, systems. The first one, we plan to have others in the future um, but this is something, this is an ecosystem much like the V6 ecosystem that is a many year scale system. So, Revo works like this. You get the thing that you want to change and you unscrew it mm -hmm. and then you take it out and replace it with the thing that you do want. And you figure out which ones you do and you don't want. Out of your beautiful coloured selection which is not chosen by accident. Um, we took a standard that is used in hypodermic injection needles and PCB drills that helps accessibility for people with certain uh, color blindness um, or color differentiation, um, different abilities. Um, so we tried to choose the most inclusive colors we could by following that. Um, and we added some pop to it as well. And so the idea is that you should be able to look at your machine from across the room while solving a problem at your computer and think I've got a 0.25 in there now for that small gear I was printing last night, but I've got this big bracket and I need it done by end of day so I can cycle the printer at six before I leave because I've got to get home to a wife because I've got another printer to run. So need that done we've got to get a 0.8 in there. Do I have a 0.8 over to the machine? Yeah, that's the... Uh, I've actually not remembered all of the colors yet. Um, green. Green, 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 <laughs> green. And you can see from across the room, you can see you've got the green. Sweet. Nail it. And you DFM your part, just like everyone DFMs for FDM without quite really thinking that they're doing so. Yep. And subconsciously, they're DFMing for 0.4 because doing anything that isn't 0.4 is a massive pain in the backside. Um, if you did that with milling machines, you'd be laughed at. <laughs> so why are we still doing this with FDM? Because the gains are just as big. And so we want people to, all the way from the see the problem, solve the problem, design the solution and manufacture it, that like, whole thing should have a which nozzle size am I designing for? Because if you're doing that for machining, you're doing that too, yep. right? Everyone does that by default and it helps you. Like, you know, you can hog that out and you, know, and you pull off some cool trick and then it's like, boom, save cycle time by a whole bunch. 
And when we get onto the future of doing like manufacturing with FDM at scale, which is coming, I can guarantee you is coming. Um, this is a big deal. It's a square factor. So you can have huge gains in productivity on a print farm multiplied by thousands of printers. Like these are not small, small factors. So any operator can change any nozzle in 30 seconds or less with no training. Something that was, I think, one of the hardest problems we ever did at E3D. This is what used to be a heater cartridge made in one factory, a block made in another, a sensor made in another, some screws made God knows where, and an Allen key, and you put it all together into a thing. We have a copper alloy um, with a coating and it's very high thermal conductivity, but importantly, it's round. Um, and we got quite good at making round things over yep. the years. Yep. Um, round things are efficient because you can feed them on automatic lathes. Yep. That means that we can make the metal part that was the block, that is kind of the logical successor to the block in many ways in function, but not in form. That is the metallic part that you see here. It's tiny, it heats up in like a quarter of the time. Don't quote me on that number, but it's about that. It's, less, it's yep. definitely less than half. <laughs> then we have this part on the outside, which is the printed heater. And then we tuck into, in a special way, um, which I will show you off camera, because it's real cool. Okay. Um, the slice engineering boy is really gonna enjoy cutting <laughs> these in half. But we print, so, we designed it like we wanted it because like on oh no, like the wires getting caught and covered in plastic and getting ripped apart big problem so make sure that we've got some plastic resistant silicone over here strain relief one of the largest causes of failures of hot ends yep. you've got steel armor under here looking out for you that we put on for you very good um, you should still strain relieve it yourself, yeah. but there is some inherent strain relieving that is, I would say, pretty damn good. And we formulated our own custom bonding compound through months of heartache, um, but it's incredible. So, and that's what sticks everything together because we're not the PTFE hot end company. Like we're E3D, the all metal 300 degrees plus company. So the first system that's coming out is a, you know, standard thermistor temperature limited device, but this is a system that will reach great heights. The really fundamental difference about this system is it's designed for manufacturing at scale. Um, because we, when Joe and Macau stole PCB tech and used it to make a heated bed, stroke of genius, right? Um, and once again, we stand on the shoulders of giants um, and Joe and Macau and bros, this is ceramic PCB tech. It has a PTC safety effect. So you can take a 12 volt one of these and hook it into a 32 volt system, which should be pr pumping out yeah. 250 watts, yeah. which is like fire and meltdown. And you just get a gentle glow. And I, it's not a good idea. And I don't recommend that <laughs> in the slightest. And that's not a specification. <laughs> but the point is, this is not safety by an algorithm. This is not safety by some separate component. This is the inherent physics of how this heater is made. And I guess the biggest news is that we vertically integrated and that's why V6 is looking a bit stale right now. So what does vertically integrated mean for those that are not into manufacturing? We're making it downstairs in the UK. Yeah, we're designing an ecosystem. Um, 
And so we've got Hamera Standard, which will now become Hamera Revo, and it'll be Revo compatible. We've got a Revo 6, and I tried to get them to call it 60, but Martin wouldn't have it. Uh, a little bit too Elon. <laughs> um, yeah, it goes where a V6 goes, yep. except you now get Revo. So the geometry kind of externally is exactly the same as a V6, so it's basically drop-in replacement after you've bought that. Yes, so if you have a printer that's running uh, an E3D, genuine E3D V6, like a Prusa Mark II or three, for example. Yeah, there are a few <laughs> of those out there. There are a few. Then this thing goes go straight in. Um, and also there are quite a few printers out there that run clones of E3Ds. I don't know if they're exactly going to fit, but you can give it a go. It's the Wild West out there. <laughs> We're still optimizing our manufacturing capabilities and like reducing cycle time and running it down. Um, it will come out of the gate slightly more expensive than a V6 for an exact V6 equivalent. Um, but we're talking like a tenner here. We're not a $300 hot end company. Um, we're here for, you know. For everyone rather than just for someone. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and that goes not just like price and accessibility. Like the Prusa boys made printers work and accessible by making themselves correct. And you gotta hand it to the Creality guys that they made the price come down so far that a lot of people bought Enders. A lot. Right? And to learn your please. So we're still can like optimize for cost and bring it down and down and down and down. Um, but this is the first one out the gate. It's like the Tesla Roadster, and then like we work our way down. Um, but hopefully we just get to optimize man like our manufacturing processes um, and bring down the price as we go, as we scale, because this is a really nice scalable process. Um, and so we hope that in the future, and I hope near future, I don't want to use Elon time dates. Um, that we can significantly reduce the cost of a high quality hot end. Fundamental technologies is heaters. E3D is now building heaters. And learning from the Prusa guys, every single one serialized. Very, very nice. And do you know what that means? Data online for everyone to look at? You're damn straight. <laughs> when we get there, <laughs> when the poor overloaded software guys finally like have some bandwidth because they're struggling. These things, really, really big deal. This is why it's taken a long time. We've built a manufacturing process from scratch, yeah. um, all the way from this, like material science up. And then the second fundamental technology is an ability to change nozzles, make nozzles that are factory sealed, metal to metal seal, no PTFE, no like, you know, glue to seal it up, no epoxy. No, 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 no. This is like same old E3D you know and love, um, except now made fast, easy, no tools. Sanjay, thank you very much for talking to me today about rapid change and repo. It's excited to see what the future holds with E3D and this range of products. Thanks very much. I, yeah. I'll speak to you soon. I am immensely excited. Um, yeah, I, I just cannot express how hard it has been to keep my mouth shut and the guys over the marketing team. And now I can finally shout it out to the world what we've been doing.